Today on Rappler. Ako na po yata ang kauna-unahang senador ng Pilipinas na naging biktima ng cyberbullying. Na yung iba ay meron pang sinusulat, gusto rin ako kasuhan sa pangyayaring ito. Eh gusto ko paalam sa kanila na wala pong krimen na plagiarism sa Pilipinas. Senator Soto hits back at critics accusing him of plagiarism. The Integrated Bar of the Philippines asks Supreme Court justices to release their statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth. And Senator Tulianes blames Patinko Huanco for Filipino athletes' poor performance in the London Olympics. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Senator Tito Soto says he is a victim of cyberbullying after he was criticized for plagiarizing from a blogger in his speech against the Reproductive Health Bill. In a privileged speech Wednesday, Soto does not apologize. Instead, he proposes crafting a bill that will define and regulate blogging in the Philippines. He claims he is the first senator to be a victim of cyberbullying. The blanket disclaimer ay pag-amin pag -amin ko po na ang research materials na nilalaman ng aking talumpati ay batay sa mga pag-aaral ng mga ginagalang na eksperto. Pero ano po nangyari? Doon po sa tinatawag nating internet, yung uh, Twitter, Facebook, mga blog sites, ako na po yata ang kauna-unahang senador ng Pilipinas na naging biktima ng cyberbullying. Na yung iba ay meron pang sinusulat, gusto rin ako kasuhan sa pangyayaring ito. Eh gusto ko paalam sa kanila na wala pong krimen na plagiarism sa Pilipinas. Soto argues that anyone who sings a song without attributing it to the composer is also guilty of plagiarism. At dapat daw yun, eh, may mga attribution at kung ano-ano. Kapag ginuma po natin yan, lahat po ng kakanta ng magkaisa, lahat ng kakanta ng balat kayo, lahat ng kakanta ng kanta ng BST and Company, pag hindi ho sinabing ako composer, pwede ko hong i-charge ng plagiarism kung maniniwala tayo sa kanila. Soto also moves to strike from the Senate record the paragraph copied from American blogger Sarah Pope. Soto will deliver the last part of his speech against the RH bill on September 4th. Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile defends Soto, saying what matters is whether his arguments against the RH bill are sound. The Senate President says he does not condone plagiarism and admits he is not internet literate. Internet eh. Hindi ako nag internet Kaya nung, nung lumabas yung, uh, 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 yung uh, suplong o okay, keha okay, o yung question tungkol sa ating kasamang majority floor leader ng Senado, tinanong ko, ano ba yung blog? Dahil hindi, hindi, wala akong blog, hindi, ako, hindi ko alam kung ano yung blog. Akala ko parang slogan yung blog, yun pala. Eh para, parang libro yata daw yun. Sa internet na ilinalagay mo doon ang iyong mga panaginip, mga opinion, mga ideas, mga uh, kaalaman. The Catholic Educational Association of the Philippines backs the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines in opposing the reproductive health bill, but says it respects Catholic university professors who support the bill. CEAP National Advocacy Commission Chair Father Joel Tabora says the organization does not have a unified position on the bill. Earlier, CBCP President Cebu Archbishop Jose Palma said Catholic schools should not teach anything against official church, church teaching. This was a reaction to a statement by Ateneo professors supporting the bill, saying it is compatible with Catholic teaching. Tabora says the professor's stance comes from a, quote, rational deliberation and a search from their conscience. Faith seeks understanding and understanding seeks faith. It's, a, it's the mandate of the Catholic University 
And if you stop the discussion, you kill the university. But if you kill the Catholic university, you hurt the church. The group and Archbishop Socrates Villegas says there is no truth to speculation. The teachers will be terminated, adding they are not, quote, trigger happy in imposing sanctions. I just want to caution you that uh, we bishops are not trigger happy with imposing penalties because we are first brothers by baptism and we are first fathers who need to guide and to correct. In 14 years, this is the first time the RH bill has reached the period of amendments in both the House and the Senate. The next two weeks are crucial. The Integrated Bar of the Philippines asks Supreme Court justices to follow Chief Justice Lourdes Sereno's lead and disclose their statements of assets, liabilities, and net worth. IBP President Rowan Libario says Sereno's move should encourage other Supreme Court members to disclose their wealth and address concerns about transparency in the courts. On Tuesday, Sereno says she would be releasing her Sal N in response to news reports about her involvement in businesses. A Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism report shows a certain Maria Lourdes Sereno involved in Access Law Incorporated, S Metrics Incorporated, and MRM Studios Incorporated. Sereno previously released to Rappler a summary of her 2010 Sal N, which shows she had net assets of more than 17 million pesos. Sereno says she will release her Sal N on Thursday, August 30th. A statement will be issued soon that will indicate what has taken place in yesterday's unbound session and that would include disclosure of the statement of assets and liabilities of the chief justice. Presidential spokesman Edwin Lacerda says President Benigno Aquino will name the replacement of the late Interior and Local Government Secretary next week before leaving for the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit. At the Senate, Senator Panfilo Lacson believes the Liberal Party will have first crack at the position. Eh, it competition ito. And we should, it all boils down to the President exercising that prerogative to uh, appoint kung sino man yung uh, gusto niya appoint sa isang cabinet position. LP President Mar Rojas earlier said if given the chance, he would give the position to Cavite Representative June Abaya. Abaya is the Secretary General of the LP and a good friend of Robredo's. House Majority Leader Neptali Gonzalez backs Rojas, saying Abaya embodies the qualities of the late Secretary. The others being considered for the post are former Isabella Governor Grace Padaca, Manila Mayor Alfredo Lim, and Davao City Vice Mayor Rodrigo Duterte. The presidents of the Philippines and China will likely discuss a territorial row on the sidelines of a regional trade summit in Russia next month. Foreign Undersecretary Lauro del Rosario says President Benigno Aquino will reaffirm Philippine claims to parts of the South China Sea while seeking to ease tensions with China. Aquino and Chinese President Hu Jintao are due to attend the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Leaders Summit next month. On Wednesday, U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines Harry Thomas says his country wants to see a, quote, peaceful resolution of the territorial conflict between the two. We don't take sides on this issue, but we think it should be resolved peacefully and in accordance with uh, international norms. We're, we are against economic coercion, uh, and uh, we think this will should be decided at the negotiating table. Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel denies taking a leave of absence as president of Partido Democratico Filipino Lakas ng Bayan, the PDP Laban. Pimentel denies the announcement of United Nationalist Alliance spokesperson J.V. Bautista that Pimentel will go on leave from the party because he's running with the administration's senatorial slate for 2013. I do not know where, where that came from. because I did not file any leave. I did not mention any intention of going on leave. And uh, Attorney J.B. Bautista actually does not hold a, a uh, critical position in the party. So I don't know what is his business in announcing and making this major announcement affecting the party, uh, affecting the president of the party. He's not. PD 
PDP Laban formed an alliance with former President Joseph Estrada's Puerza ng Masang Pilipino to form UNA, the rival coalition to the administration's Liberal Party. Instead of taking a leave of absence, Pimentel says he will inhibit from all UNA and campaign-related matters. Pimentel bolted UNA over the inclusion of resigned Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri in its senatorial slate. Pimentel accuses Zubiri of cheating in the 2007 polls. Senate Committee on Amateur Sports Chair Sunny Trillanes blames the Philippine Olympic Committee for the country's poor performance in the London Olympics. Trillanes slams POC President Pepinco Juanco for his lack of vision and failure to provide clear leadership and reform programs. He goes as far as calling Juanco, quote, the greatest stumbling block to sports develop development. Senator believes the government needs to views the value it gives to sports. He says sports in not only winning of medals, but also an integral part of growing our citizens properly. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number four, on the eve of the seventh anniversary of Katrina, Category 1 storm Hurricane Isaac hits the southeastern portion of Louisiana State in the United States. The National Hurricane Center warns of strong winds and a dangerous storm surge along the Gulf Coast. The storm causes surges and flooding in several areas, including Shell Beach in Louisiana and Waveland, Mississippi. Forecasters predict the surges will get worse, while a power company reports 150,000 homes are without power. At number six, things seem to be looking up for the Philippines. After a 6.4% growth rate in the first quarter of 2012, reports from international observers are largely optimistic. The most recent is by the New York Times, which called the Philippines Asia's bright spot. The August 27th report makes an interesting case for the country's high population growth rate, calling it, quote, a driving force for economic growth. At number seven, Syrian opposition fighters claim up to 400 people were killed last weekend in the town of Daraya, southwest of Damascus. If accurate, the incident would be the worst single attack by government forces since the civil war broke 17 months ago. Government calls the attack on Daraya a counter-terrorism operation, saying the area was cleansed of terrorists. Human rights groups claim most of the dead were civilians. And at number nine. Prosecutors in France agreed to probe the 2004 death of Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. Medical records state Arafat died in a military hospital near Paris of a stroke resulting from a blood disorder. But family members claim he was poisoned. Swiss scientists hired by a documentary crew found traces of the radioactive element polonium-2210 on some of Arafat's belongings, including his trademark kafia. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. NASA transmits the first song to be broadcast from Mars on Tuesday. The song is Reach for the Stars by Grammy Award-winning artist Will I Am of the group Black Eyed Peas. It's then beamed back by the Curiosity rover to NASA's Propulsion Laboratory in California. It was done as part of efforts to get the youth more interested in science. The Philippines' biggest mixed martial arts event in the history Pride of a Nation is just around the corner. On Friday, August 31, some of the best MMA fighters in the world will gather in Smart Araneta Coliseum for 12 fights in five different weight classes. Of the 24 fighters competing, five are Filipinos. Edward Falayang, who's coined MMA's Manny Pacquiao, will be up against Japan's Felipe Enomote. Headlining the event are Bibiano Fernandez and Japan's Shinya Aoki. The public weigh-in takes place tomorrow, Thursday, at Araneta. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which has eight emotions for you to choose from. When you click on one, your vote goes to the mood navigator at the center of the page of Rappler's home page. If you take a look at today's mood navigator, we've seen the impact of the death of Jesse Robredo. Salamat Jesse final rights from yesterday at 67% sad, 25% inspired. And overnight, we saw stories like The Faith of Jesse Robredo, a story by Patricia Evangelista, 88% inspired, 6% sad. And Philippines bids Robredo final goodbye, 77% inspired, 23% sad. Based on these stories of the last 24 to 48 hours, we can see inspired is the top emotion in the mood navigator today, but a late bloomer coming in just late this afternoon 
today's top story, Soto blasts critics, backs blogging bill comes in with, now is a story with the most number of clicks at 76% angry. But even then you can see 1% voted inspired, adding to the mood of today, most people are inspired. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Wednesday, August 29, 2012. Visit Rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us choose the mood of the day. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.